Hi, Steve Van Meter here and welcome to your Monday night premiere. We take about 15 minutes every Monday and Wednesday night to try to make sense of markets that really don't make any sense. And, and how can you, when you see panic bidding, like two hours before market closes, people just dying to buy equities. Like, what, what, did they not want to buy them this morning? Was there something in the news? No, there was nothing in the news this afternoon that would say, hey, I, I have not bought yet. I better get in before the markets close. And so, of course, the news is spinning that says, you know, fears of coronavirus are now, you know, over because, you know, stock prices are rising. And this is one of the things about this market that we talked about on Friday is computer programs are now looking at their tail risk, which probably is that way for you. And back here in their volatility formula, the big spike that happened two years ago has fallen off. So what these programs are doing are selling bonds to buy stocks because as far as their formula is concerned, there's no tail risk. There's no risk at all. And so as an investor, when you turn on the TV and say, oh, well, you know, coronavirus and markets are up. Americans aren't worried. No, to deal with the problems of the last two re recessions, we created all of these various computerized control programs say, don't worry, put all your money in stocks. This program has a formula that if things go wrong, it will, it will hedge it. Now, we're not telling you that it will actually take you know, weeks or months or even two years to properly hedge its risk, but that, that, that's immaterial. Don't worry, you can, you can buy stocks and not worry about it. So when you hear the markets are up and there are problems going around the world, you have to ask is who is doing it? Is it human traders or is it computers? And it's computers because 80% of this market is controlled by computers. And that is pretty crazy to think about um, the day that will eventually come when they sell. We've, we've never seen them with any consistent selling. We've gone 10 years. Yeah, there's been some bumps in the road, but we've never seen all these things flip from buy to sell. And not we, we've seen some of them, but not all of them. And that day will eventually come. And all they're doing is leveraging up their risk. They're taking the most extreme equity position these computer models ever have as if there's no risk to the markets at all. So I want to take a look at today. The NASDAQ McClellan summation index is showing liquidity is dropping, even though stocks are pushing higher. There's, there's not a lot of liquidity in the markets. The Fed's backing off a little bit. But what you're just seeing is just continued speculation by uh, computer models and investors who... You know, for whatever reason, maybe believe that the Fed can rescue us from uh, the coronavirus. And all the, all the Fed would do in these situations is really provide liquidity and hope it goes away. Because if it doesn't go away, if, if problems don't go away, the Fed can't solve it. And everything they're doing, they hope, oh, well, if we can just buy people another week or two of liquidity, that'll be okay. But again, that didn't work following the dot-com bubble or into the dot-com bubble and did not work into the mortgage bubble because there are certain events the Fed cannot hedge the markets against. So let's take a look at how hedge funds are positioned in the markets courtesy of Hedgeopia. And I was really interested in, in when this came out, it, it, he releases this sometime Saturday on Saturday mornings. And I was really interested because I was looking at this move down in treasury yields last week. And I was like, man, I wonder what the speculators, what do those hedge funds do? do they, are they kind of, you know, putting up the white flag and backing off? Nope. As of Tuesday of last week, they added to their 10-year treasury short positions, which is really cool because you're we're facing a short-term triple bottom in yields on 10-year treasuries and a broad 12-year triple bottom. And all it's telling us is the market is deathly short treasuries. And when it does break out, all these people are going to be forced to buy. And they're trying to push stock prices higher, but it's the bond market that's going to have the last laugh. And look at 30 years, they added a little bit to their short positions again. And what happened? Treasury yields fell this morning. So they, they were in these positions as of Tuesday. And unless they're backing out, and I don't think they are, they're taking losses here, betting on some sort of massive reflationary trade, either that or perhaps people just don't think the coronavirus is an issue. Let's take a look at West Texas Intermediate. Speculators backed off their positions a little bit. What I want to look at is why oil is likely to get down to 42 a barrel or thereabouts. 
So you can see here it says 56, but if we where he's got this blue line is fairly close to say $50 a barrel. And what you can see is all of these positions starting in February of a year ago were added above oil being at its current price. So I mean people are all these people here above this horizontal blue line were betting on higher oil. Now why will we likely see 42 where we may or may not see support? I don't know, but look at where the last place these speculators were buying. Here's 42, and you can see just right above 42, right above 42. Oh, actually, they were buying closer to, almost closer to where it is today, buying right down in here. So you can see the last buying was at that support at 42. Beneath that, from the speculative standpoint, your next level of support is down here in the 30s with major support uh, down uh, just around $30 a barrel. So this is an issue when we look at the technicals of crude oil, what you see is there are a lot of people, a lot of positions that are speculatively long in a period of falling oil. And we can go and look at the dollar. And here's something that doesn't make sense. Speculators are adding a little bit to their dollar long positions as the dollar is rallying in their long oil. Now, oil and the dollar can rally together, but when the dollar is rising and oil is falling, it tells you there's something wrong. It tells you financial conditions are tightening, not easing. It tells you they're tightening, especially during a dollar shortage. So this is interesting that you see the speculators were long, the dollar backed off their dollar longs, did not get a push higher in oil. You'd think if you're gonna be long oil, you'd wanna be short the dollar, but they weren't. Let's go back up and see how they were positioned in the S&P 500. They added quite a few positions there to their uh, long positions. And then in gold, uh, still relatively near the all-time high in record uh, long gold contracts. And the next shoot to drop is we're gonna see, if we see the dollar rallying and treasury is falling, which we are, that's a sign of tighten, tighter financial conditions. If we see the, um, dollar rally against crude oil, that's a signal of tighter financial, <laughs> tighter financial conditions. The next shoe to drop is gold. So we wanna look at gold peaking next, which is looking like it. And then after that, stocks aren't that far behind at all. Uh, they, uh, no real change in the NASDAQ positions, no real change in their small cap positions. And it looks like they backed off their volatility shorts a little bit but I'll imagine they brought some of those back uh, by this time next week. So again, these are as Tuesday of the week before, so they're not, um, they're, they're not to be considered a timing piece, but they just give you an idea of where they're positioned. And in the bond market, you wanna see they're really, really short, and that's pretty cool. So let's look at the panic bid in stocks today. And here you can see the S&P 500, the largest ETF symbol, SPY. Not a huge amount of volume, but look at this price move right at the end of the day. So bid, 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 bid. Now what was happening before that is the Fed was buying coupons in the, from their quantitative easing that's not quantitative easing program. And you can probably guess around the time they finished their easing buying program was somewhere right here around uh, noon. And that's when the speculators came in and sold off some of their bond positions because they're facing a tactical problem. Let's go look at 10 year treasury yields or 30 year treasury yields. We're right back now what's looking like a triple bottom. One, two, three, we're getting very close to this with the all time lows here at 1.9. So these speculators were long as of Tuesday. So here's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. So as of Tuesday, this is where those positions were. They looked real good and then by three trading days later, they're upside down on those positions they added on by Tuesday. So it's not real good, but we're guessing that a lot of those hedge funds were shorting right in here. And just as quick as it went up, it's come back down. We should get a knock on the door here at the support again. And if there's nobody home, then you should see uh, treasury yields now make a run to its all time low. And the same with 30 year who are very, very close to being inverted against the federal funds rate. Remember the lower end of the federal funds rate is 1.5. If that breaks below there, it's pushing the Fed to further cut rates when they don't really want to. And the reason I'm saying they don't want to 
is simply because they're backing off on their overnight dollar loan program. Let's take a look at TLT, the 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, widely traded, probably the largest treasury ETF in the market. And it got up right in here. Let's zoom in on this. Um, from a technical perspective, you can see today's price just got up into a zone where there's been selling. So the thing's almost ready to break out. And I haven't pulled the line across, so maybe that'll be uh, foreshadowing it breaking through. But it got up in, prices today got right up in here where the sellers have been, and the sellers came in in late trading, and we could see push prices uh, back down today. But again, not after they got up to where the sellers were before. So this is a good sign because what you're looking for here is how aggressive are the sellers? Well, we didn't have a huge amount of volume and we didn't have a big price move and the big price move didn't, of what the price move was, it didn't come until the last uh, hour of trading. So what it tells you is the hand of the sellers is not overly strong here. So they're not very confident yet. Maybe we'll get a move higher um, tomorrow or over and overnight and get another run at it. Maybe it'll come down a little bit before it tries to shoot. I don't know. Uh, but all I can tell you is there's no major economic news for the U.S. that's coming out tomorrow that's going to drive this. Most of the news is headed um, coming later this week. Let's take a look at oil and gas producing stock symbol XOP making new all-time low. You know, what's interesting is everyone's so worried about chasing tech stocks that people think that indexing is diversification when they don't realize that most of their portfolio is in five stocks right now. I mean, they, they just don't realize it. But what you're going to hear in the years to come is, man, I wish I would have bought oil stocks when they were cheap. Now, I'm not saying today by any stretch of man, I think they got a lot further to go. But oil, the energy sector represents a mere 4% of the S&P 500. So it's really not having a play here. And which is great news because what it tells you is most investors do not own energy stocks. They act like they do, but they don't. They just don't know. And when you see the sell off in oil and it's going to probably get deeper due to the coronavirus, it's going to be massive opportunity at some point to buy low on those positions. And you'll hear people looking, saying, oh, man, I wish, I wish, I wish. Let's look at the VIX on the two year tail risk. Just to show you. Let's zoom in. Where were we two years ago? We we're right in here. So let's go and zoom in. And you can see we're coming out of this big spike. So all these computer formulas are now saying add, add more in stocks and sell some of those bonds. And then probably coming in through this year, they're just at extreme positions just because of this tail risk uh, floating away from the volatility market. Let's take a look at crude oil. And crude oil closed below $50 a barrel today. And that, as we kind of looked at, is a signal, whoops, go out to the two-year chart, that the next likely destination for crude oil is somewhere in the mid to low 40s. Now, will there be enough demand there? I don't know. Uh, but from a technical perspective, this we should start to see people that were long at 50 all the way through here start to get out of those positions because they're losing money. And I definitely want to take a look at ExxonMobil before we're done. Uh, ExxonMobil is one of the large, probably the largest traded energy stock because there's just so many shares of Exxon. But from a technical perspective, it broke through this long trending 12 year support. And the last area of support is right over here. And we're going to go look at this. But keep in mind, there's not a lot of volume here compared to what you're seeing here. Not a lot of buyers because, again, not many people own energy stocks. And the big guys have dumped their ExxonMobil stock. They're just waiting for prices to come back low enough to buy. Now over here on the right, you see where it says 59.96. This is the closing price today. And we'll zoom, let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit. And a little bit further. So here is back those 2010 lows for Exxon. So we're at 59.96. We're right near the bottom of where all of these people bought. So if these people are done buying, or maybe they bought and then sold later, ExxonMobil is a matter of $3 away from falling out below its 2010 lows. And there's no support left. After that, your next, ne next major level of support really doesn't come down until it's in the 40s, the low 40s. And that's an ominous sign for the oil market because the largest energy ETF, symbol XLE, is 
or excuse me, 20% or 21% Exxon Mobil with another roughly 19% at Chevron. So it tells you that at some point Chevron is likely to follow suit here and they held up pretty well today, but they came out of this right triangle and they're trying to come back up and find support or res test resistance. But if Exxon goes, well, I can tell you that uh, Chevron's not far behind. But the next big thing other than the oil sector to watch for is the dollar and the dollar is rallying over 98 and looking like it's heading up to test overhead resistance at 100. We want to see if that puts an end to this gold rally. If it does, it tells you financial conditions are absolutely tightening and the stock market is not far from that. So I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Wednesday night with whatever we've got then. The content of this video is provided as educational information only. It's not intended to provide investment or other advice. This trail is not to be construed as a recognition or solicitation by a solely securities finance for instrument or to participate in any particular training strategy. If it was paired by Steam Van Meter on personal capacity, opinions, stress, video, then we do not reflect the view of Atlas Financial Finance or Steam Van Meter Financial.